Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon to those in Europe. Uh, my name is Bruno uh, from Fabric Technologies Automation Studio, Technical Sales Representative. I'm here with my colleague, Vincent Ramillard, who's going to be uh, showing you uh, this webinar uh, topic, which is the uh, quickly design and simulate your 3D block manifold uh, in Automation Studio. Uh, this is one of the uh, new features that we'll be developing in the Automation Studio 7.0, uh, soon to be released. Um, this is the uh, overview of the agenda that uh, we have planned today. So basically, we'll be going through some of the overview on the uh, 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 overview of Automation Studio, how to be able to create uh, some of your CAD circuits in Automation Studio, how to be able to simulate, and then how also the uh, manifold design process, how that integrates with Automation Studio in the different modes of operation, whether you're doing it automatically uh, or manual mode. And then afterwards, we'll be going through some of the simulation capabilities that are uh, integrated from the block uh, manifold 3D design and Automation Studio, so you get the uh, simulation of your projects. And we'll be going through uh, some finalizing some features on project reports uh, and other uh, features related to this module. Uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be doing a presentation where it'll take about, let's say, an hour, uh, 60 minutes. We go through the uh, the interface, and then uh, the last session will be uh, for the uh, questions and answers. So last 30 minutes, we're going to dedicate really to uh, questions and answers. If you have any questions, uh, please use the, uh, the chat. Uh, you see a little questions box. You can fill up your questions there. We'll do our best to be able to address them uh, during the uh, during the presentation. Uh, so you can ask them really at any time, and uh, we'll be picking some of those questions to uh, discuss a little bit on the Q&A session. Um, with that in mind, Vincent, uh, please feel yes. free to start. Yes, thank you very much. I see a lot of people attending already, some people still connecting. We'll start, and uh, as uh, my colleague said, do not hesitate to uh, ask questions during the presentation. We have uh, other colleagues as well that uh, can, can handle all, all the questions you, you ask. Uh, and so on. So let's start. Uh, it's a big, uh, big planning. Uh, as explained by my co colleague, uh, five uh, parts in that presentation. So really, the scope of that presentation is to give you basic information. Uh, uh, so make sure that when this feature is available, you will be able to review the video uh, after. So you have the basic manipulation. Uh, so uh, ends on the little session. Uh, that will make you uh, able to start up the utilization of that feature as soon as it's officially uh, released. Okay? So the first uh, phase of the presentation uh, will be an automation studio. We'll start to cre create a little CAD, and after that, we'll jump into uh, into the, the block. Okay? Good. So now you see my automation studio interface. Uh, a lot of people are, are fully aware they are using automation studio all, all the ready as a, as a CAD and simulation software. So I will not extensively explain uh, the way it works in automation studio. I will try to focus on the new feature that you'll need to uh, to. Uh, or to know and to manipulate in order to 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 get to the manifold design uh, of your uh, block. Okay, so same, okay, same way. Then you are used to use automation still. You take the components that uh, you want and so on. Uh, so you will find all the uh, ISO standardized symbols in the main uh, library. So all the components that are extra manifold can be uh, found here. Uh, so you build your, your circuit, and as we covered last week in this uh, in this uh, the the manufacturer catalog webinar, we we already have extensive set or extensive library available. Others are uh, under development at, the, at this moment. So, in order to add your cartridge valve, you will have a selection of well-known manufacturers uh, here. Okay. So if I use this catalog to start creating a, a little uh, manifold, uh, really a simple one because we want to focus on the manipulation uh, of the tool okay. and so on. Uh, just I know, Bruno, I don't know, I, I hear uh, you typing. So if you can just mute if you are not, uh, it would be useful. Okay, thank you. Okay, so a little, uh, take a solenoid valve here just to build and complete my cir my circuit. We'll just take this cylinder. So really simple, a couple of components, a couple of ports. So you go in this catalog, I take this Hydroforce valve. And as you know, 
you are able to configure the parts uh, from here just to uh, to show you with the 3D okay, how it, uh, it works. On this catalog, you have access to the data. We'll get back to, to that. And you have access also to the, the 3D. So this is the unconfigured product. So as soon as you go here and you select which component you are uh, you want to use or that you need or that your customer required, Okay. And you finalize your selection, you see the 3D will be updated. So now you have your parts completely configured with the right 3D information that will be reused uh, later on. So when you know that this is the component that you want to, to use in your project, you bring it here. Okay. So just to show you that with this tool, it's a multi-manufacturer tool, so you can mix cartridges from different uh, different vendors, different supply, supplier. So I will just go on the next catalog on my list and I will just add a little protection. So I will secure my circuit with a little uh, relief valve uh, here. Okay. So the same concept, make sure that this one mount gets the right amount of flow for my application. You're good with the data, the documentation is still, uh, still there available. So I will complete the configuration of that part. So I select the pressure range that I want and so on. Part number is updated accordingly and so on. Okay? And I bring back this component in. Okay? So before talking about the manifold, you may be interested to just test, do some tests on this circuit. Okay? So as you know, for most of you, really easily you can connect. So double click here and so on you can add the reservoir really to make sure that you have a flow source that you bring the flow back to this reservoir again and so on so i have completed my little circuit here in automation studio side so as you know you could write on activate the simulation okay and see is this uh, this block working and so on okay? so the components that you have here or in the catalog contains all the simulation properties in order really to uh, to adjust and to test the performance uh, of your circuit. So just in, to make this uh, this retraction a bit faster, I'm going to go uh, here and I'm going to increase the spring stiffness of it. Okay? So this will bring me to a higher pressure level in my circuit and the retraction will be a bit uh, faster. Okay, so I'm good. This is the circuit uh, that I want. So now, uh, from now, I will show you how from this, you will turn this automation to project into a manifold project, okay, uh, that I will uh, that I will create, that I will design in 3D. So to do so, those will be really important to know, okay? So you will need to access to some specific command in, under the Fluid tab, specifically, uh, available to uh, to to create uh, to create the the manifold. Okay, so the first one will be the boundary line. Okay, so this is a frame that I use okay, to select the component that are inside the frame that I want to uh, to put into a manifold uh, manifold uh, the design or into a manifold project okay, or manifold block. Okay, so another object are the connection ports. So you can easily click okay, to add those ports okay. as soon as you double click on the boundaries a port will be added automatically also and it, when you are in that situation when you are you have multi ports you could always which could be convenient to create all of them at once you could right click okay, so the right click uh, like other uh, feature in automation is still really useful and you'll find a comment that will take all the connection, the, the, the intersection with the lines and the, the boundary lines and will create ports automatically. Okay. So the, the frame, the ports, uh, and here we go. Well, the ports may not be the one that you need. So I will be able really easily to load some ports. As you see, those ports are standardized already. So since the flow requirements of my application may not be that big, I can resize this one here. So after you have created those ports, you could adjust them, making sure that they match the requirements uh, of your machine and so, and so on. Okay. Here we go. And the last one was really a small port just to show you that you can mix different port size. Here go. Okay, so now, I have framed all my components. The ports are, are added. I have information. 
uh, you could add all the extra information that the, that you need. So you could add the connection port name that could be useful. So port one, port two of those valve, one, two, three of this one uh, as well. You can add the all the ID of the component. So everything can be displayed really in order that to, to get the information you need. You can hide also the, the, the this information about the connection port, port names and so on. Okay. So I have my manifold built. Now I want to activate or I want to start uh, the manifold project uh, creation. So to do this, what you need to do, you just need to frame everything that you want to include in that project. So the ports and the frame and the components inside. And with a right click on the frame as well, you are able to create a manifold circuit. Okay. Now that you have done this, you'll see a new tab appearing. So like any uh, Windows-based uh, soft software, some specific command. So we will explore that uh, later on uh, later on as well, okay? Uh, and also there is a little pen here, just you may, you may have made a mistake or you realize that you, you need to insert extra valve or other components. When you click on that, like the assembly, uh, the assembly object and automation zoo, you will be able to modify the internal of uh, the, this uh, this frame. Add valve, remove one, change the configuration. A little sideline, really interesting, is well, for the component, you still have access eh, from the schematic, which is new in 7.0 version uh, as well. You'll, you'll still be able to, to change the configuration of your, uh, your product live from the schematic. Okay, so no need to get back to the catalog to reinsert a new component. You can change the configuration from there. Okay, so do not hesitate to ask uh, questions if there is a, a, any. Uh, I just wanted to show you CAD and simulation and automation studio. Now I'm ready to jump into my manifold design. So phase one has been uh, com completed okay, uh, at this moment. Let me jump into the manifold project. So to do so, into my frame here, I have a cube sign. It's really simple. Double click on it to open the 3D editor. Uh, it may open on my right screen, so I will bring it to the, uh, in my Unix screen in a few seconds. Okay. So, yeah, once again, uh, if you have any question, comments, or if you, you want me to slow down or uh, you cannot hear me well, uh, you do not hesitate to participate uh, in the discussion, okay? Good. So here's my uh, my uh, interface now. I have my Automation Zoo project on the left side of the screen, and there is this empty manifold. So the second part is really to explore the uh, the, the automatic uh, mode. What I mean by automatic, so you see this red sign here means that the block is not configured yet. It's a simple block. So and only one button, the button auto create block, I will be able, oh, there's some database update that will, will be required later, later on. So, oh, sorry, this is a little bit uh, too uh, too low. So the software based on the 2D logic, on the 2D schematic here is preparing solution. Well, this is a simple manifold with bigger one, it may take some time. So you could already make him stop, okay? Uh, you can already make him stop and get the best solution. It's a simple one. So I will just let the software complete the 100 solution. So at the same time that I was, that the, this was displayed, the software continue calculating some solutions. So this auto route, or route uh, the auto create block command here is producing a various or a set of solution that you can analyze easily after the uh, the, the calculation and after the the, the block is solved uh, based on some e e optimization criteria that you may want to uh, to 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 get uh, out of the, of the block. So we see number of drilling, oil closure, if you want to minimize the weight, those are aspects eh, that may change from one solution to another one. The shape of the block also, the port location. So you have statistic of each blocks that uh, was produced with this autom uh, automatic mode. Uh, and as well, you could show here some of the, uh, the specific, uh, okay, you can play here. So you have a visual also selection or filter and based on the, your preferred selection you can drag and drop this one here and this is the one that will be used 
uh, uh, that will be used for for the remaining uh, parts or uh, as you complete the block. Okay. Vincent. So, yes. Uh, please slow down a little bit. Slow down. According to some, a little bit when you draw the the manifold stuff like this. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that uh, that feedback. We'll uh, we'll re-explain. There will be a video, uh, so you'll be able to to review that. Uh, really, once you 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 will need to uh, to get more information. But uh, thanks for the the feedback. Okay. So sometimes there is lag also and go to webinar. So good. So I've I've uh, got this block here on the right side. Uh, more typical questions or needs is okay. How the algorithm is is built, or uh, what are the constraints that are taken into account, and so on. So for this, let me explore and the uh, the preferences of this 3D editor. Okay? So there is a lot of preferences okay, that you can set constraints. So let me explore uh, the most re re relevant one uh, here. So the first one is the positioning so based on some characteristic of uh, the components the ports components with coils and so on you could define a preferred face okay so the algorithm will look first at the the first level preferences and if you cannot find any solution with those preferences we'll switch to priority two three four that can easily be set here okay? on the left right back of the block and so on okay so this is really, uh, really important to know. Uh, really important as well are the clearances. Okay? So the software will make sure that you respect some minimum or maximum uh, criteria to avoid uh, having some manufacturing issue or having a failure on your block, uh, not knowing this. Okay? So the unit of the software, by default, I set it in millimeters, will be important if you work more in the in, in inches to set this before you start your, your project. Okay? Uh, there is also, the uh, optimization criteria. So this will will be some some preferred uh, scheme for the manufacturing or the drilling process. Okay, so you can to avoid some sharp edge and so on. There is some things that you can force or that you can avoid based on if you enable or disable if you toggle this uh, these checkbox here. Okay? It's really important as well to get the block uh, that could be manufactured efficiently. Okay? Some other aspect. The two next are more related with the identification. As you work, so the name of the faces, the color of the extrusion face that can be changed. Okay? So the the, the 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 dark blue here means the the, the faces and uh, and so on. Uh, the color of each drilling also can be customized uh, okay? and so on. So the two next are really important. This is directly in line with the manufacturing capability that you you have. So you are able to preload and all whole closures set. Okay. So library of expansion plugs and threaded plugs here. Okay. Uh, so if you are working with different manufacturing sites, you can preload them and make sure that the auto routing will only select the available diameters, the available tools when uh, the, the automatic routing is uh, achieved. Okay. S same for the drill set, as I explained. So uh, you you load the one that uh, that you have. The other one really important as well is how you want the drilling to be uh, to be done. So you select uh, uh, also say what which type of intersection you want as the, the drilling is done. Uh, all uh, all the L intersections are done, and also really important this tool. The common question is also capable of dealing with angle drillings. Uh, depending of the time, I may be able to show you an automatic uh, drilling for for some uh, for some specific valve that can uh, handle it. Okay. So this is about the manual uh, mode. Uh, so I, I see the pe people start being a bit more active in the question. Do not hesitate uh, also to uh, to answer the, the question now before I simulate the block. I will show you that this automatic mode can be can be used in conjunction or with some of the manual mode, or if the block gets bigger and the auto routing may get some difficulties to solve a 40 valves block, we'll start exploring with you 
the manual mode, some of the key comments that we have developed that will really make uh, a difference as you design the block from scratch, or if you want to move or change slightly the configuration proposed by the auto uh, create block. Okay, so just for you to see where you we we are in the uh, in the presentation. Okay. So I've covered the creation of the block in Automation Studio. We have explored the automatic mode okay, with some preferences in order to make this, uh, this mode more efficient and give you a, a good solution uh, upfront. Now we will move to the manual uh, mode, okay, which is convenient for, for block designers or when the block uh, becomes a bit complex uh, and so on. Okay, so to do this, I, I forget to do that uh, in this. Let me re-explore this interface a little bit here. So with the block, okay, you have the complete freedom to define a lot of, uh, to give or, or to feed this, uh, this software with a lot of information. So the project parameters will give you the capability to, to put all the your customer uh, information or your own information if, you, if the block is for you at the, at the end of the day. You could also predefine a material in the clearance. Uh, could get the, back to uh, this. You could define the clearance based on the material. So you can select the, the material. Uh, okay. Uh, you can set the, the pressure, flow requirements of the block, some notes and so on. Okay, 3D, we have seen this. And as you build the block and so on, you will be able to recuperate the part list, technical information of the block. And this will be covered later. We'll be able also to produce all the export format. Okay, so let's say you have set the project parameters. We get back in 3D and let's start to build the block from scratch. So for this, let me erase everything that I have here. Okay, should I do a control A and so on. Okay, so I have a block here. So this block, okay, you have access to some uh, to some command here, okay, about the block dimension. Okay, so you could start from an existing block size or you could manually, just make sure that you get enough space as you put the valve, you could manually change the shape or the size of the block okay as a starting point so like that you are not constrained on really small blocks you could position the components where, wherever you you want okay? and you can compact it the block later as i will show you you see now i lost my synchronization with my 2d okay so as a block designer let me get back also to this manifold uh, circuit so i will go inside here so you are able to see if there is an unconfigured product, if, if there is a missing uh, information in the valve. At this moment, I'm good. Everything is uh, is blank. And also now that you need to position the valves on the block, okay, you are able uh, to see which components are not on the block. Okay, so this manual mode, or is if you, you work uh, as an hydraulic engineer and you want to communicate with your block designer or, or, or with your supplier of solution, the manual mode can be really useful also to, to better communicate, to reduce the iteration okay, of the block. So let's say that uh, you know your machine, you know that you may have some constraint. You know that these two ports or the three ports need to be on the front. Okay, so really, really easily you take the components in. You drag and drop okay, from the block, and not more complex than that. You bring it on the front, uh, on the front face, and you have this smaller ports here. So they have been put on the front face. Okay? Uh, you know that these ports are connected with this one here. So you may test different face, face, and you realize that okay, maybe if I put it on that face. I may have something that uh, will will be nice. Okay, so easily you have information you recuperate from the two the the two D here. Okay, uh, about the the more the the connect connectivity, what we call the bindings. Okay, so the color really meaningful with the only with the color. I know that okay, maybe this port should be better on that side and so on. Okay, so. When you double click on the face, you will have an orthogonal projection or you'll be in line with the face of the block. So this will allow you to manually 
being able to, with the snap that we have, to perfectly make this port in line with the other one. Okay. The same with, let's bring this, this port here, the same with this guy here. You see, I can do an horizontal and you will see that mm, this may not work because the two ports are uh, too close to each other. You have that information based on the clearance that I just showed previously. Okay. So that information here tells you that those two ports are too close uh, for each other. You can always, if you feel that, no, it, they are too close, but they are, to make the block more compact, you have uh, on each component port, so we'll explore some of those uh, as well. If you right click, you know that there is a design issue based on some, some uh, constraints that uh, are implemented in the software, but you could accept that design issue. Okay? So as you accept it, the color for, will turn a normal color and you will have a list that will show you that uh, well, later on, you'll have a list of all the warnings or the issue that the designer uh, has accepted. Okay, so let me complete uh, this block. So I move it like that, no constraint, and you're good to do the connection. So there is a variety of ways to do the connection okay, between this ports here and uh, the port of the component here. Uh, so when you click on a component, you see you have access. If you click on the port, you have access on a little uh, blue circle here. So on the port, this allows you to go and move the port until the middle of the component. You can make it go longer if you wish and so on. So this is a way where you take this hole here and you just move it. Uh, you just move, move it uh, with the arrow. The same way you can add a contour bore if you wish. Uh, so as easy as that. The information about the counter boring information, everything can also be, be precisely defined. So now I'm doing some manual operation, but you could uh, you could add also all these uh, these perfect uh, dimensioning uh, characteristics for the counter bore, for the uh, the angle of components, especially for the solenoid, you could make sure that this, the, the, the connection will be uh, where you want it to be, uh, the location of the block. Okay, so we have an X, Y, and Z. This uh, one, you will need to add the reference. Okay, so the, so the dimensioning of the block is, is also uh, defined. Okay, so this is one way. If you prefer, you could also, when you have multiple components connected together, you could, on the right click on the port, you can decide to generate a drilling from this port to another port. That is connected to it so now this will be done automatically uh, and so on so this is the, the second way to make the connection if you wish when you get a complex connection and you want to save time you could also after you select a binding of multiple connect, uh, components uh, tied together you will be able to to generate channels so there is some other uh, operation here that you can do so if i generate channel automatically this connection will be done Okay, so now let me add, add the other components on my block. Okay. Let me add my other uh, components on my blocks. I'm still have this solenoid valve. Once again, after you discuss, you may want it on the top for accessibility and so on. So you bring it and here you go. So now a lot of red means that, okay, there's a lot of, uh, of problem with this component that they are tied together. So you see that this green might uh, fit here, but there's not a, a, enough space. So in order to move this component, you see when I try to move it manually, I may lose my connection. Okay? Uh, so I will just show you we have also some movement type that we have developed in order to, to when you you start having some connection done that you don't want to to lose you are able to move everything down like I'm, I'm doing here you see the component will still attach I'm still able to move this component and so on okay so now I I'm good with it I'm just make sure that this component uh, will need to reactivate my single connection here perfectly in line here we go and I'm able here to, to generate I'm sorry 
phone is ringing here. Here we go. Okay. And the same for the ports. Ports here. I go and here you go. Uh, and show you again. Right click here. Generate drilling. I'm good. Okay. So now there is only one connection. You see the block still not finalized because uh, you know from the binding and formation okay, that this port, this port needs to be connected with that line. Okay. So we'll show you another way okay, to create the connection between those two components. So this will be available from the library explorer. So in the 3D, there is all the information. So the port that you have in 2D, if you prefer to directly work on the 3D without having the schematic, you will have access to the ports and the components that are not on the blocks already from here. Okay, so you, now they have all been positioned. This is where also you could start adding your mounting holes. Okay? So I add my mounting holes here. Information on the mounting holes, is it drilled through or tap and so on. So you bring the mounting holes where you want them okay, to be and, and so on. Uh, let me just okay, so we'll, uh, compact the block before adding mounting holes. The same. You have an engraving, so if you have a specific notes to put, you go here, you type the text, and uh, you're done. So for the drillings that I want to do, okay, you just need to take this external drilling and you bring it and you launch, or you 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 release it into the ports where you want to connect. So this is where I have my minimum diameter or the smallest diameter. So I will use this port to to add my drilling. So this drilling, like any other objects, can be moved into the preferred phase to do the connection. Okay? So I take that drilling and I bring it here, perfectly in line with this one, and so, so on. And once again, I can make sure that I generate I generate the, ch the channel with this drilling. Okay? Okay? So oh, I've skipped a step just to show you that the extra port here was automatically inserted. So at any time as you design the block, when all the components are in line where you, you think they are in their optimal position, you can click on the generate channels and the software will help you to solve the, the remaining uh, bindings uh, and, and so on. So you see, the manual modes can also be used in conjunction with some automatic, uh, automatic feature. So now all the connections are made. Uh, as explained, well, you may want to have the connection onto the uh, other side. So I can go here and really bring my 100 de degree. My connection will be on the uh, on the other direction. Okay, I'm good with that block. Now I need to make it a little bit smaller. So you could resize it automatically. So if I show you again with the resize angle, you are able to move it automatically. The, the block will be compacted. If I do it on an extrusion phase, you'll see that you will only be able to do that for the existing extrusion phase that you have. Okay. And if you want, also, you can use this compact block function. So this block will be now compacted based on the, once again, on the constraint that you have defined. Okay. So now I have uh, um, I have showed you I've explored with uh, with you the, some some of the manual operation uh, the precise push positioning the manual operation the snapping function uh, so the extra information uh, okay, you could really important you could have locked some position on current phase so if you know before launching the automatic mode. Uh, that some component you you want absolutely them to be on the face. The automatic routing will make sure that in that case this port will be on that face. Uh, we'll try to solve the block uh, like that. Okay, uh, and, and so on. So if I get back to my presentation plan here, I think I'm on time. Uh, okay, so now I have explored with you some uh, manual mo uh, mode. Okay, uh, 
there is other that I will cover. There is extra feature that uh, prefer to open uh, a bigger block uh, to showcase uh, those uh, in a smaller block like, like that may not be really uh, meaningful. So let's explore the block simulation that we were having uh, in the title of that webinar. So what I mean by block simulation, you saw already the automation studio simulation. So for the block simulation, now that I have solved my 3D, in 2D or in, uh, in the manual or automatic mode, I'm able to launch the simulation of the block. What I mean by that is all the internal passage here will be taken into account to do the simulation in Automation Studio. Okay? So when I launch, uh, I may have, okay, let me reopen that. There is uh, some constraint here that I don't have. I uh, don't know, Bruno, if there is a, I just need to re, uh, to reopen the, the project that that, uh, that I've done. I don't know if there is any questions that uh, you, you feel could be interesting to uh, Yeah, answer. Would, yeah, would you want to? That? Yeah, sure. Uh, by, some of you have been asking just really quickly um, if this, uh, uh, if this uh, Automation Studio Live, uh, 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 the Live Manifold or the uh, Block Manifold uh, module, if it's available currently in your version of Automation Studio, just want to clarify that, no, this is an upcoming feature of Automation Studio uh, 7.0. So currently, you know, in your license of Automation Studio, you can't access this. However, it will become a feature as, as an additional module of the software uh, when, that, uh, when the 7.0 is made available. Yes. Okay, so I've done a, an, another block. Uh, yes, there's a manipulation that I may have made wrong, but the simulation of the block, what I mean by that is that when you launch the simulation, you see the internal of the block is really simulated by this uh, this block uh, here. Okay? So you have access, if I zoom a little bit here, you see with the animation where the flow is going from this port to the other one. When I move slowly here, you also, and it's it's small, uh, maybe on your screen, but I can have the pressure the pressure measure live. So I have the flow 24 liter per minute, 258 bar from here to the output of the port. When you move, you see, when I go to the other side, now the pressure from this port to the outlet is only 0 0.08 bar. So you are able to really see inside the block where some pressure drop may be increased because you suddenly change the diameters uh, and so on. So those pressure measure will be exactly the same one that you are used to measure from this uh, Automation Studio uh, side. Eh? So, Really, really interesting. All the 3D information after you have created the block is carried over to the to the 2D information uh, here. Okay? So when you move, you have a perfect synchronization about the pressure levels. You see the pressure now suddenly increase. The color change because you reach a certain level of pressure and and so on, up to the end of the block, and now you reach no more flow. But the flow is getting here. So the, the simulation can be really, really uh, useful in order to better, to optimize the block based on that criteria as well. So you've seen that with the statistic that you uh, you collected, you can optimize the block based on the size, the volume, uh, uh, the price, uh, probably also some pricing information could be relevant to the right selection of the block. And also, in no time, no requirements to, uh, to to use a CFD software, you can do a simulation here that will be perfectly synchronized with uh, the circuit. So this block could be added, could be part of uh, of your uh, uh, of your complete project, and you can simulate also the inter the internals. Okay, so this is good because give a, a quick uh, a quick uh, information on the pressure drop. You have access, if I stop the simulation, you have access now that you have done this simulation, you also have access to a pressure drop table, a report that shows, okay, in a tabular format, all the CV, KV that you have from each component to each port. Okay, so based on that information, when the block gets complex, you could have a numerical indication where some of the information may be important to, uh, to get to, uh, to improve. 
Okay, so this is also really important to to to, to get, or this is really important information. Uh, okay? in, in order to uh, to optimize the block based on the performances and uh, and so on. Okay, if you wish. Sometimes there is weird shape maybe in your manifold, uh, so you may you may need more precision or you need you, you may need to customize the pressure drop calculation. So we for those of you that have done this in the past, you still be able to do a simulation okay, in what we call a normal mode or, or a standard mode from the previous version of, of Automation Studio. So this allows you to get access to individually if I get in, to individually set the diameter of the lines you could add manually. If I get back here as well, if I get back here, you will have access to uh, to some fittings. I mean fittings, but this could help to simulate the, the, the T intersection, L intersection with specific KV, CV factor. So using that, it's a bit longer, but you, you could customize the pressure drop calculation of the internals of the block based on the 3D as well. But that information needs to be inserted uh, manually uh, and, and so on. Okay, so those two modes based on the precision that you want and what you want to do with uh, with your simulation could be re really uh, useful. Okay, so uh, I, I have time. I'm a bit, uh, I'm good with the time. Let me show you that this simulation could be really, really uh, useful in order to compare to compare two blocks, okay, that may get some difference in, in the 3D design. So you, if you, you think or you hesitate between two, three uh, 3D configuration, okay, just a little side note, you will be able in the manual <laughs> manager to archive those solutions. You will be able to change those slightly to move a port from the side and re-archive another one. So you have your two solutions here in the manifold manager. I will explore, explore those features uh, a little bit more later on. Uh, and after you have your two blocks, you could also get really important. You are not limited to one manifold per project. You could have as many as you want and you will have a, a, a multiple 3D uh, editor that will uh, open and that you will be able to configure the block. Okay, if I show you an example of a, a comparison, okay? so as I explained, you can compare the same circuit with two different 3D configuration, or you could also compare okay, two different solutions. So in that case, I'm just starting the simulation. So the schematic looks the same, okay? but when I uh just open the 3d just to get that information as well just to show you side by side okay so as i open those window uh, bruno is there any other question that you you want to also to answer live as i'm opening my window uh, bruno um i think by a lot of the questions are i, I think worth uh, going into um yeah, I think I think it would be good maybe at the end to go through a quick uh, quick recap of the uh, creation of a circuit in Automation Studio um, because some uh, some people were having a little bit of, of uh, issue understanding the the transition between the two. Uh, okay, okay, we'll, at, at we'll the see the, the, the questions. If not, uh, Bruno, I, the, I, well, you could explain that the, the standard uh, Automation Studio demonstration can can be done. Uh, now we show you the inf this information, but if anybody online are willing to have a proper or more longer Automation Studio demonstration, uh, we can take your coordinate and we'll organize something at your convenience as well. Okay? If time is, is limited uh, here, so you see you have two blocks, the same 3D configuration, but there is a differences in the selection of the component that this the simulation can also give you. Now I'm uh, I am testing similar circuit, but you see that okay, this valve, same opening, same control, but this cylinder is going faster. Okay, so what I've done, I just use here a compensator with an higher spring rate. So this produce higher differential pressure. This cylinder will move faster, but the counterpart, what you can test is my by making this cylinder going faster, you have more flow inside. And if you have more flow, maybe the pressure drop will increase. Maybe uh, the energy-wise, 
this block, yes, will be faster, but will will make your your solution uh, more expensive to operate. So just a, just a small example to show you uh, really how, how you 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 could uh, you could use this simulation to compare a variety of solution. Okay. Uh, now last part. I do two last part. The part of finalizing the block. I saw a couple of questions about export format. So this will be uh, will be explained uh, in the finalizing the manifold project uh, feature. So I've just done some simulation. I could do more if you wish uh, in the, the Q and A. We could explore uh, other aspect of the simulation. That's, that, that was just to to give you a little uh, uh, little sneak peek of the simulation capability of this this block. Okay. So in the section five now. That you have performed the simulation. Uh, take the 3D. You have performed the simulation. You know that this is the block that will fit on your machine on your system. You want to bring you want to bring this uh, into the manufacturing site. Okay? So let me just uh, get here. It will not get confused. Let me erase that the second X file that I just copy paste. So the finalizing the block will include the production of the assembly drawing, the report, everything that you need to share to your customer, your supplier, to finalize the block and making sure that this block will be manufactured on time. Okay. So this first aspect will be to generate the technical drawings. Okay. This technical drawings you could add. Uh, okay, you could add manually the schematic, the 3D view, the mill spread. Okay, you, this can be done manually. So all these objects will be synchronized. So, so, okay, so you could add the one. You can position them where you want them on your schematic. Like for the automatic uh, routing, we also allow the user to define some auto positioning feature. So you could pre, uh, pre pre decide what you want on your schematic, which type of paper you you want, the size, uh, the scaling factor, what are the projections that you want for for the uh, uh, on the faces and so on. So you're happy with that. You could then activate the auto create block. So this will take your preferences uh, and based on the location that you decided. Everything will be positioned approximately where you want them to be. Okay. Okay. This produces a technical drawing really quickly, but this is not a static PDF at this point. Huh? You still be able to modify everything. You still be able to uh, to change uh, some projection. You may decide that this is not relevant. You could erase uh, that. You can move everything really to have something quickly that will be ready to uh, to share to a customer or to send to uh, manufacturing okay uh, here you still have access to change the, from first angle to uh, a to third angle projection if you wish okay? which i think it's the standard uh, used more in the, in the us if you you feel that the automatic uh, sizing is not enough so you could add different type of dimension Okay, so from the little snapping points here, you could add the dimension that you wish. You could add some 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 uh, call out if if you want to specify some surface with some uh, information, okay? uh, and here we go other uh, other information as well. The reference can be added and so on. Okay, so this produce uh, the information uh, ready to be print out or sent to uh, to anybody that will. Will need to manufacture the block or finalize the, pro the project. So the same for the production drawing. Production drawing, it's a more, I would say, specialized uh, format or uh, or drawing that we made available really uh, with the important information for the manufacturing. Okay. So this contains only the faces with all the holes, with the diameter here, with the cavity information. Uh, so you have information on. Uh, the, the, the drill or the tool that uh, could be used in order to to drill those cavities uh, and so on. Okay, so now I have my technical drawing, production drawing. You can go in the finalize tab where 
you will be able to make a design check. So all some some warning, okay, that have been accepted. If there is some issues that you have accepted, they will be listed uh, as well. Uh, and here you go. You can generate a complete report with some information. So this will contains all the customer information, the specification of the block that you, you have filled in the project parameters. So all the information will be available with the schematic, with the 3D, with the bill of material, and so on. So PDF format extracted, ready to be, uh, to be shared or to be uh, saved uh, within your project. OK? And so again, other finalizing is to generate the drill list. So you could have all the information on each faces. This information can be useful as well to be extracted for the manufacturing site. And I saw a couple of questions uh, here about the import the export format. So the export in order to be able to reuse CAM software or uh, CNC controllers and so on, we do offer a variety of export format. Uh, the step format is probably the most the, the, the one you uh, use the most. So you can uh, extract a step format of the 3D. The 3D can, can after that be reused uh, in order to uh, replicate the manufacturing sequence through a CAM software or through a CNC machine controller. Okay. Uh, could also export uh, the faces uh, using the DXF export, XML. So there is a variety of, uh, uh, of CAD uh, export that you could get out of this block. Okay. So we're good with uh, with that. So this uh, well, this complete the let's say the the, the first phase of the, fi the the of the part five. Uh, now since the, there's a nine or ten minutes before the end of the first hour, uh, let me explore with you some uh, extra fee feature. So to do this, to do this, let me uh, open project that may be a bit more uh, in line with what you, you are doing. So since the beginning of the presentation, I kept everything at a really uh, at a smaller scale, just to, to focus on the feature of the Automation Studio Live Block Manifold. Uh, now let me just uh, open uh, a block and we will explore some other features that may be uh, really uh, useful uh, to use. Okay, as you start using uh, the, this module. Okay, so this is the 2D block. We have already routed uh, it. Okay. So let me uh, let me open the 3D. So any question, uh, Bruno, that in line with the, what I've just shown, the part uh, five about the project uh, finalizing or export uh, <coughs> format? That, that, yes, uh, some questions that were asked were regarding the import of the 3D. If we want to maybe clarify that really quickly. The import of the, the, the treaty? Yes. Uh, you see, if you import a step file coming from another uh, another CAD, you may not get all the the uh, the information. It's important to, uh, to understand that uh, the information that is contained is in this uh, catalogs about the treaty. It's in a specific automation studio for, format. So when you import a block, right, if you the, the, the 3D information is, is not the way that the software can handle it, you will not be able to, to get advantage of this uh, automatic routing and so on. Okay? But that said, really, really easily, and we have done that already with some, uh, with some of our uh, uh, customer and users, really easily, you are able to reproduce uh, the block uh, in order to be able to simulate it and get getting all the information to take full advantage of, uh, of it. Okay, so the block we have some 3D uh, 3D. Uh, if you create a new 3D diagram, so the 3D information that you import may not contain all the information that is required in order to 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 create the block from Automation Studio Live. Okay. I hope this answered the, the, the questions. Now that I, uh, okay, let me close this 3D and open this one, this one here. Okay, here we go. So here we go. So this is a block here that will allows me to complete some exploration. So I have to struggle to make it uh, here we go. Okay, 
So this is a block that we have made. So this block will allow me to, to explore other features that make a bit more sense to explore on a wider block like that. Yeah. So if I go here in my view tab, there's a bunch of uh, tools here that will make a difference in, in your efficiency of creating a block. Okay? Well, we have seen the manifold manager. When you have a block like that, uh, you may start doing something with the block and after a couple of minutes, hours of work, you realize that, okay, what you have done so far is good, but you may want to try another route. So you go here and you archive it in your solution and you can re use it later on. So this shelf here allows you to, to save solution that are completed, but also work in, prog in progress, okay, to use it later on. Another really, really important feature, it's really the channel visibility that you have here. This will be really important okay, as the block size increase in order to, to, to see all the information about the components and the the connection made and the remaining bindings so the connections that are not made in a block like that eh, and i can put the 2d in parallel because you'll see as as you probably saw already this 3d is perfectly synchronized with the, the 2d so when you go here and you select something in 3d the selection will be made also into the and the other way around as well if i go and I click on the pen here. Okay. Every time I select a connection here, will be selected in 3D. If you right click on it, there is on the channel here, you could decide to filter the channel. So what it will do, it will remove, okay, or it will make invisible all the other channels. So you will be able to see all the band that you have from one component to the the other one okay it's really important you can filter from here uh, some of the, uh, the the connection that you have okay well, sometimes it's good to uh, hide everything sometimes you may want to 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 make everything visible okay so you filter on this channel but you can also decide that that the other channels you want to see them because you want to make sure that you are not as you create another drilling that you are not making this new drilling interfere with other drilling okay so you decide about the visibility uh, that you have so this is the selected channel and you know uh, where are the other channels connecting the ports and the other components okay so really really important uh, okay, to to use when the blocks get, gets uh, bigger so you will find it into visibility channel here okay so this is what i uh, i was explain, ex explaining so those are the warnings that as you were designing manually that were prompt said that oh there's a problem here and you decide if you want to accept them because you know by with your experience that this will not be uh, harmful or you can do that you will be able to accept them and the software will keep track of all uh, of those okay another really important feature is what we call the sectional view the sectional view when the blocks get bigger allows you to cut some part of the block in order to 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 ease the visualization of some internals of the block. Okay? So when you uh, work slice, uh, slice by slice, could be really useful to reduce the, the complexity of the block or the visualization of the complete block, really to, to have more information on some internal that you want to uh, okay? uh, that you want to concentrate on and so on. Okay? And also by just the same way then uh, we were, we were uh, that I showed, you see each component get specific coordinate you are also able to take some measure on the block okay so the uh, the distance between axes the distance between the face so now i'm taking a measure i click on the point here okay uh, and i click on another point here so i have the information live okay? i could use that information to position precisely the the block as well okay I, I think uh, we're we're good in time. Last feature, okay, for the last minute, is if you need to add a component that we we don't have yet or a specific component okay, that we have, we have ways of doing uh, of doing it. Okay, so the first thing is to make sure that the cavity is existing. 
So the KVD Manager, it's a really, really important feature as well that will allow you to, to create or to select or to visualize some characteristic of the KVD. So the, there is already preloaded an extensive uh, quantity of uh, of cavities but you will be able to create or import your own cavities so regarding the import uh, the import question the cavity can be imported into the right format to be reused for the 3d uh, the, the 3d information uh, or for the routing uh, information as well okay so as you get the cavity loaded you are able if I get back to uh, to the automation studio side here, okay. Just hold on one second. Okay. So I didn't show it yet, but there is another way to uh, insert the boundaries and the connection ports. We are also working to make available a specific automation studio manifold element. This will contain the same boundary block that I've shown. Uh, the ports, porting information, and you could also insert a custom component with two, three, or up to six ports. Okay? So you add this into your design, you you uh, you link a cavity or you associate, I should say, a cavity to this custom component, and like that you could uh, you could work uh, on your on your specific product that is not available yet, and to make sure that you'll be able to route your solution. I'm uh, one minute uh, after schedule. I just get back. I think I've covered most of what was planned. Uh, my colleagues can can let me know if there is a uh, missing information, but we'll be able to recap it in the uh, Q&A part. So, little summary of the important point. Uh, I've shown how automation suit the way that you are using it will not change. There is some small extra information that you need in order to activate or to initiate the, the, the block design part of it. And we have seen also all, uh, how the simulation can handle the 3D, uh, the 3D design or layout of the block in order to optimize uh, performances of the block up front. And we have covered also some, some feature that will make sure that once the block is done, can be exported, can be uh, sent to any manufacturing site in order to get a block uh, manufacturer as expected. Okay, so thank you for uh, your attention. Now it's your time. Uh, the question box just exploded, so we'll let uh, Bruno try to manage this. <laughs> Hi Vincent, how are you? <laughs> so I'm good. good. So are you good. overflowed by question, uh, Bruno? At this point, what I saw. yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, a lot of questions, but a lot of them are really, really, really good questions. Um, and uh, I think, uh, but for some of you, the big concern is that we showed a lot of things uh, in the short presentation. Some of you found it a little bit fast, uh, which is normal. There's, a, you know, this is a big module with a lot of new features. So uh, to recap this in an hour is a little bit difficult. So uh, what we'll attempt to do, uh, maybe during the qu uh, questions and answers, is is maybe answer some questions based on. Uh, some of the the things being asked, and then uh, maybe do small recaps on some things if you yes. uh, if that's okay I, with you. It's a, it's a really good point, and this is the drawback. Uh, we wanted to make it. Uh, we could have make it three hours, but we wanted to make it one hour because we know that people sometimes a lot of meetings in the morning. So it's a, it was really a condensed meeting. Uh, you will have a link to the video where you will be able to stop uh, things uh, around. So the video will remain available. Uh, after we we released uh, that uh, that feature, so you could go there and see some parts uh, that were a bit fast in that presentation. So sorry about that, but I just wanted to make sure that I was covering everything that the, the uh, that you will do, do with the uh, with the tool. Okay. Uh, uh, did you show the, the Nico uh, Okay, Nicola. No. Cavity manager, yes. Uh, question from my colleagues. Uh, good question. Yes, I've I've shown the Nicolas the cavity manager. If you want me to redo it, also we'll see. So go ahead, Bruno. One uh, half an hour. If there is remain question, we'll reach out to you as well. Then uh, no problem. So sure. So I picked a couple of these up from the uh, the the uh, questions and answers. Um, just maybe at the beginning, uh, if we go back maybe to the automation studio, the uh, the little process of the creation of circuits. I know that yes. it's a feature that's currently available, but uh, maybe for some people that are new to Automation Studio, it would be good to understand 
uh, how you get to the 3D part uh, before. Okay, so so short recap, huh? short recap. So this schematic here that you see is a combination of of flow source like a pump and actuators that, that I have selected in my library explorer. So for those of you un, unused with automation so at all, so this represent like components, uh, ISO standardized symbols. So you use them and you drag and drop them on your schematic. So from here, you are you will find all the components that uh, could, could be used and okay, uh, you can customize them. There is builders in order to change uh, in order to change the, uh, the the symbols, to change the the porting, to change the okay, so so that this is available in Automation Studio. Uh, well, what we have done over the last 10, 15 years, if you wish, also for those that were registered to last week webinars that couldn't attend, my colleague Richard did explore the catalog manager that we uh, that is available also in Automation Studio. So. This catalogs over the last 10, 15 years, we have developed uh, a collaboration and partnership with with, uh, with component suppliers. Uh, so we have developed components ready to use in Automation Studio with the commercial information, part numbers, and so on, but also with the simulation information. So when you go into this catalog, we also have worked on some cartridge valve catalog over the years. So you go into this catalog okay, and you drag and drop the parts after you configured it with this little gear sign here. You drag and drop it on your on your schematic. Okay? You drag and drop it. Okay. So you build your schematic with Automation Studio. And if I want this valve to be put in a manifold, I will need to, to identify, I will need to identify those component, eh? this component in that case, as something that I can put into a manifold. So you bring this here, you can add some ports. Okay, so you just click on the boundaries here, and here we go. And now, like it is in Automation Studio, you click on one connection port and you click on to the other one, you click here and click here. Okay, so now you have inserted the components that you wanted. Okay, now if so, maybe the, what, that was the missing point. In order to make those bunch of component turn into a manifold project, you only need to select everything. And like many times in Automation Studio, the right click on the boundaries with all the selected components will give you some some specific command. And this is where really after you have selected the boundary, the ports, the components configured, you create your manifold project. Okay? After that, you know that the manifold is created because you see a, a, a little pen here uh, symbol that allows you to go inside the assembly and change or do some modification. Okay? If you want to drill up, you have this cube symbol here, so really, really simple. You need to double click on, on it. Even if the tooltip shows control click, we have changed it for a double click, so we'll, we'll also change the, the, the tooltips sh shortly. Okay. So double click and the, the 3D interface will prompt, as simple as that. Okay. So for, uh, for those Bruno that ask the questions, I hope this show again the, 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 the principle of how you really make a schematic turn into something that could be configured. So you draw your circuit using the manufacturer cartridge valve catalog, you add the boundary, the ports, you select everything, you turn this into a manifold project and you're good to go. And from there, automatic mode or you could also manually bring the components here. Okay. Any qu other question, uh, Bruno? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yes, yes there's se several several questions. Uh, one of the other questions was regarding the um, the angle drillings. Uh, yes. Somebody had asked about if we were able to do compound angle drillings in two planes. You you mean uh, it's a good question that uh, maybe my colleague Nicolas was in the work. Uh, the, the work design. Uh, I'm not sure about this question. Uh, for sure, if I show you something that I that I have built. So uh, 
Uh, you mean in two angles? Yes, it can be done. Okay, so let me explore the, the angle the drilling with you. Uh, so I have a, my standards, a standards uh, my counterbalance valve circuit. So let me open it and I will uh, solve it. You will see, and after that we'll explore the angle the angle drilling. So if if it's by well, the compound, are you meaning two two different ang uh, drillings? That will that will link somewhere or just uh, to have in two uh, in two planes because the two planes we can handle it no problem so if you see you see I will launch the auto create and we'll show you okay uh, at the same time it's something that uh, as explained our automatic algorithm is able when the components are suitable for it when the ports are big enough okay. So just wait uh, until it finalize it. So same with the auto routing with two counterbalance valve here with the the big ports. I have activated uh, the angle drilling from my auto uh, my auto routing. Here we go. So this is the solution found. Okay. So just to show you here. So this here. Okay. So I have like a little uh, uh, snap here. So so when you drill the angle drilling, you could make it go, uh, uh, well, you can extend it. If I select that line here, you see, you will be able to to play with it in one angle, so once again, okay? So this would be angle. And I will be able, when I use this grip here, I will be able to move it. Okay. So I don't know if the, this is what you mean by compound uh, drilling, but uh, we can make a, a, a drill, drilling angle, uh, not only in the plane, it could be uh, okay. in, 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 two, uh, in two direction. Okay. So I don't know if it answered the question, but uh, at least it showed you what can be done from angle drilling. So once again, those two ports, at any time uh, you can activate the angle drillings. So you select from here to here. Uh, like Think maybe the automatic angle drilling uh, cannot work, but one, as I, I shown, if I go here, you add any drillings. Okay, we'll add to this ports. Okay, uh, we'll bring it here. You can go and change the drilling properties to make it the size that you wish. Okay, and from here you could activate set angle drillings. And as I shown, you will be able really to move this drilling and making sure that will fit perfectly in the location where you want it to be. Okay, so as simple as that. So I don't know if uh, the uh, question was was answered, uh, but I think this gives you an overview what can be done with angle drilling. Uh, okay, another... so you move it, change the angle, and here we go. Um, another question, Vincent, <clears throat> that came up uh, was regarding the export uh, formats. Yes. Uh, import and export formats is, uh, I, I guess, a, a big question that a lot of people were asking. Yes. So what, what is the question, uh, Bruno? Uh, for different uh, import formats, but if we uh, talked a little bit about the, the 3D there, but import formats uh, or, and export formats. But export formats would be good to go over at least uh, the uh, once you have the block created, the type of exports you can get uh, in terms of like the, the block itself, the, uh, the yes. stats, the, uh, okay. the report. Yeah. So once again, what you can for the first version is with, when you export it, you export a step format. Okay. The step format could be opened by any uh, any CAD software or any CAM software in order to uh, to ease the manufacturing process. Okay? We have also developed some synchronization with uh, okay, and this is what we are looking to add in the future to add some synchronization with uh, with other uh, with other CAD software. So at this moment, we have done some synchronization with some specific database uh with creo okay so the so so it's not really an import export it's a pure synchronization so this could could also be uh, be envisioned for a future version of uh that too okay uh, and also you could if you want export to xml format that will contains all the assembly which component is is connected with which one and some extra information that also some cam software can recuperate okay 
the import format, the 3D has explained, you, you cannot uh, in, uh, import directly a 3D here. The 3D will needs to be, uh, except for a Creo synchronization. So if, if you don't have that synchronization uh, available, you will not be able to import with this version a 3D from step. Uh, you will need to to uh, to rebuild the, the the schematic and reproduce the 3D. So this is for the current version uh, of the tool. At this moment, we are already we already started to develop the generation two and three of that tool. So so there's a lot of those imports uh, that are under development at this moment. Will be important to uh, learn from you what are the preferred format that may may help in your work process and so on. So the first version really contains an export that the majority of CAD and CAM software can easily handle, and we are uh, looking at, at at maybe developing some uh, some exports directly to CNC machines or controller. But this will depend on our user base. What are what is the, prefer the preferences uh, for that and so on? Okay. So, any, any other question, Bruno? The time is fine, 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, an, another question I think would be worth to go uh, through is just the differences whenever you launch the simulation, the differences between simulating only in Automation Studio and then also simulating with the block. Yes, uh, so for that, let me try to, to get back to this little files. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, let me show you, don't require this. Okay. Okay, so you have this block here. So Automation Studio, okay? Automation Studio is a simulation software. So if I just draw the CAD here, and it would be really, really easy to understand. Okay? I just draw a CAD here, and here you go. Okay? I have a line here. So this line in Automation Studio represent an hydraulic line which gets some internal diameters and a length. Okay. So this line represents can represent something that physically you have in your machine in your manifold. Okay. So when it's time to to build the 3D internals of the block, as I will show if I open this 3D again. Okay. So let me open this. I will put this on the oh, okay. Well, you see you perfectly understand with the 3D it will be a uh, here. So you see if I take for example if I take this connection here this is shown in the 3D as something with a T connector. There is three lines here that I have. But in fact, my 3D here is only showing me a straight line where I have this component, this component, and this port in line. There's no T connector. So sometimes the 2D representation, specifically in, in, inside a manifold, is not in line with the 2D. And it will always be like that. It's impossible to make the 2D schematic really represent all the connections that you have in 3D. So when you are in the mode where you do simulate the block, this is where the internals that you have in 2D is, is, is not any more relevant. You are simulating based on that geometry here that you have. Okay, so this is the, the mode of simulating the block with the internals. So to, to give you an, a really, really quick example, you see I have 258 bar. Let me show you if I take that path here and I uh, do something really bad, I restrict that port. So when I do restart the simulation, eh, you see that the pressure, the well, maybe the flow is not uh, relevant anymore, but you see, the, the, the pressure drop based on the diameter heel will, will increase. Okay, so it's really the, the geometry of that drilling here, the size, the bend that you have, uh, the shape, the pressure drop that are predefined in the components. So it's the sum of all of those that will dictate the pressure drop that you have here. Okay? But in some case, you may prefer to do component by component the, the the pressure drop calculation so for that 
you will go here, you will activate the other mode, and this will give you the capability to insert some specific component that we have in Automation Studio. So if I go in my uh, flow line and connections, you see, if I take this that we call a fitting here, okay, I'll be able to use that fitting here and really simulate a T connection that you could have also in, in 3D. So those are really different ways of, of really uh, of simulating. It might be easier to just show it with the little fittings here. So you could add some specific object where you could define yourself the geometry and using the sizing sheet that we have, you could end up of defining yourself a loss coefficient that will be meaningful okay, for pressure drop uh, calculation. Okay, so this is the way that uh, the automation simulation for lines uh, and fittings, uh, this is the way it, it, it was uh, since the beginning of Automation Studio. Now with the 3D and the 3D internals, we were able to, to add the really the simulation of the 3D shape as well. Okay, so I hope this clarified the, the difference between those two. Uh, there, there is the there is pros and cons of each ways. Uh, it really depends of uh, precision, uh, times that you have, what you want to do with your simulation, uh, and, and so on. Uh, another another big question uh, that comes up uh, pretty often is regarding the uh, interface. By uh, there's two the interface and also the uh, the uh, preferences for auto routing. Okay. Um, whichever you prefer to go through first. Uh, the valve interface, how to, how to be able to check if, uh, like if your um, your manifold is within your design constraints, that you don't have uh, valves that are too close to each other, too close to a wall? Yes, so once again, uh, we'll, we'll see if I, uh, yes, okay. So the, the interface, as I explained, uh, let me go, go through, through that. So in the preferences, uh, in the preferences here, you have access. So this is where really you set what are the minimum distance that you allow. Okay? So there is a couple of them. So there is the component between each of the uh, component. So for example, if I show you the outline of the component. So each component is seen like that. Okay. So you see that when this, these two uh, cylinders are too close based on the preferences that you that you have here, you will have a warning saying that you are too close based on those uh, defined preferences. Okay, so those preferences, uh, as uh, explained quickly, can be based on specific materials. You could have different clearance if you use steel compared to if you use aluminium uh, and so on. So clearance of the spot, spot face. Uh, from a wall, uh, the components, the cavity clearance, uh, and and so on. Okay, so this, I, I guess, Bruno, that was your question about the interface that you, you yeah. just explained. Uh, what what is the uh, other part again? Uh, the second part was well, while you're here, maybe it's worth uh, uh, discussing. We had a question regarding the uh, maximum number of components uh, that can be used for for auto block uh, creation. But you see, it's it's not a question of a uh, of a limit. It's just that those type of uh, of numerical uh, problems or that mathematical problems, the more valve you have, the more solution you could get. So the chance of having an optimal block with the auto routing uh, really d decrease after a certain number uh, n number of components. There is also some 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 components that get some specific cavities that get that make them a bit more difficult to uh, to route uh, we have done some tests and that uh, for some some manifold we were without any problem being able to solve 10 uh, 12 we have done one with 15 uh, valve that, uh, that after the auto routing the block was solved uh, the block was really decent okay? uh, so those are really the number of, of valves that we could suggest uh, creating the auto routing to get a solution that uh, may be good almost as is with some minor configuration. Okay? 
that said, we have also the uh, we have activated the auto routing on the 20, 25 valves. It was taking a couple of more minutes to solve. Now we're talking about five, 10 minutes. That's why I didn't launch it in the type of presentation. But after 10 minutes, you have a 20 valve position on the block that can be a starting point to to modify it and so on. So the auto routing, there's no really limits uh, to 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 use that feature. Just that the result will get better uh, with a, a fewer uh, with fewer valve on the block. Okay? But still, this auto create block will be really useful uh, to automate the, the process of taking all the components one by one, setting the, their position and so on. Okay? So a lot of time saving with this auto create blocks for small, medium and big blocks. Okay. So I hope this answered the, the question. And regarding the maximum of valves that could be uh, inserted in a block, I don't think we, we have any limits uh, inserted in the software. Uh, we have done it internally up to 50, 60, 60 valves uh, without any problems. Uh, okay, so I hope this, this clarify uh, that auto auto create uh, feature. Uh, another question that comes up is, uh, it's regarding, uh, I guess, uh, some people are using some uh, some other software for being able to create blocks. They want to know what's the compatibility. I, I think it may be worth it to uh, maybe uh, explain a little bit for, let's say, if, uh, for the manufacturer catalogs, if there's a component that's not available, somebody would like to create their own component. Yes, yes, yes. But the, okay, this I've been there uh, quickly, uh, Michael and Nicola. So first of all, you need to have the right cavity. So the connection, the connection that you have in 3D, in order to do the connection, you need to identify uh, the shape of the cavity okay? and where are the, por the ports located. Okay? Okay, so all the information on the ports needs to be defined. Okay? So as I explained, you can create your own cavity or you can export uh, one or sometimes there's a lot of cross references between cavities uh, from, from various manufacturers. So the important thing is to have a cavity available with the information on the port. If it's not available really easily, you can you can create or load those cavity uh, with those data. Okay, so first, first thing first, the cavity in the cavity manager needs to be available. Okay, after that, the, uh, the easiest way if really you want to design a block, if you go in the catalog manager, you, you could reassociate if it's a specific component, you have the right symbol and so on. You could reassociate for each of the component that you have here. Okay? The information on the cavity is there. Okay? So for any component, you are able to modify a cavity if, if it's a similar component but with a special cavity for special feature. So inside each component that we have here, we pre-assign the right cavity for the component, but this can be changed here in the data with in, under the cavity information. Okay. And also, if you want to have a fully customized uh, component, what we have done, we have created we have created or we have uh, we made available into the automation zoom manifold elements we made available some can call it dummy component or components that are squared with the number of ports that need to be routed in 3d so this is a really easy way you go here you associate the right uh, the right cavity uh, and that's it this component will be routed exactly the same way then the other components uh, will be. There is also a way in 3D to add a shape on the top of this component. So it could be a square, a rectangle, really, really, really basic in order, if, if you don't find the right components in the existing catalog, this is not a showstopper. You can you can easily uh, create a, a block like that, associate the right KVD, and, and this little block here will route in 3D exactly the same way. So those are the mechanisms that we, we have uh, that, that will allow you to, uh, to make sure that the components you need will, will be available for the 3D routing. Okay, I don't know, any other questions? Yeah. I think a last little question before we end yes, is, uh, yeah, is can you specify mounting holes? Oh man, yes, I've been quickly on that, a lot of stuff. So if I, once again, my 3D should now be available. Here we go. Okay, so 
I'm in 3D. Let me remove that. Okay, so with this block, you want to put uh, mounting holes. So once again, there is in the Library Explorer lots of extra information that you could use. Okay? So the two ports components here are the one that you specified or that you have used in your 3D schematic, and the others are extra one that you could add. So this is where you will find the mounting holes. Okay? So you bring it and like any other components, you double click on it and you select which type of mounting holes this will be. Okay, so a tap, drill through, and you could also specify some uh, thre threaded uh, standards uh, that we have. So this is where you define, uh, in that case, one mounting holes. Okay, but you could uh, take this one, copy it, or bring it uh, another one. Okay, as simple as that. And this will be will be uh, appearing in the technical drawing as well. Uh, if you update all the view, you will now see that this mounting holes will appear with some with some information on its location. Here you go. Do you see? Okay. Is it uh, bon, probably a lot of questions <laughs> remaining? Yeah. <laughs> I see the that luck. Uh, what we will do? Time is flying. Uh, we need to end the, up this uh, webinar. So I don't know, Bruno, if, if you want to have the last word, if you want to invite people to continue asking their questions, uh, you will be prompt uh, to answer a little survey about that presentation. This will be really important to help uh, improving, if need be. I already took notes that I've been maybe a little fast, uh, so that's perfectly understood. Uh, we'll try to, to go slower on the other webinars that we will provide. We didn't present that, Bruno. Maybe we should also yeah. uh, forget about the slides. Yeah, it's uh, no, you're, you're you're right. But quickly, really quickly, before we close up the meeting, uh, if any of you are interested in obtaining the video that we had done on the uh, webinar last week, uh, please feel free to message us. Uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, provide you with uh, the link for this webinar, uh, so you'll all receive a video recording. But also, you'll all receive uh, basically it's a it's a FTP uh, link where you'll be able to go and access all the videos that we go and put out uh, as they become available. So we invite you to come to our next webinars. We'll be continuing doing this. This is a series of six webinars. We're currently at the second one, uh, just uh, finished wrapping this up. Next week, we'll be looking at uh, one of the other new modules of Automation Studio for uh, analyzing failure modes, their effects, and their criticality. So we invite you to join us. It'll be Thursday at 9 o'clock uh, a.m. Uh, Eastern Time Zone. Okay, and, thank and you it. very much, uh, everybody, for your uh, wide participation uh, over our expectation. I uh, hope we can hear from you soon, and we will also keep you informed about the development of the feature. So now it's time to close. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.